Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here with TRQ where you can view before you do. Do you have a problem when you try to fill your vehicle up at the pump and it just keeps clicking off and gas won't go in? Keep watching, I'm going to show you how to fix that. The issue that you're having is that the air inside of the fuel tank, which I'm going to say is represented by this bucket, is not able to escape as you're trying to put fuel in. Therefore, it won't allow fuel to go into the fuel tank. So if there's no vent, there's no way this fuel is going to go into this bucket. And I'll demonstrate that here. This is water, by the way. As you can see, the water had a lot of difficulty getting into the bucket. Now I'm going to drill a hole on this side of the lid and that will allow the air that's in here to escape as I pour the liquid in and we'll see the difference. Now with the vent hole. As you saw, all of that water went directly in without incident. Today's vehicle is this Jeep Wrangler that we'll be working on, and it does have a problem when you go to fill it up, it, the pump keeps clicking off. One of the first things that I'm gonna do, just because I can, is I'm gonna drop the fuel tank so we can get a better look at all the parts that could be involved. Now that we have the fuel tank dropped down out of the Jeep, we can get a better look at everything. And one of the things that I like to look at in a situation where we're trying to fill the vehicle and it won't fill up, is right here. On this Jeep, this is called the rollover valve. And this is on every fuel tank. And it's there, as the name implies, if your vehicle were ever to roll over, you wouldn't want the fuel to come back out the filler neck and start spilling around everywhere. So they put a check valve inside of here to prevent that from happening. Sometimes that check valve can get stuck and make it so that you can't fill the vehicle. So I like to check and make sure that the operation of that valve is, well, it moves freely and it's not stuck. In the case of this Jeep, this one looks okay. Now we'll spin the fuel tank around. And what we have on the other side is the vent for the tank. Think of this as the hole we drilled in the top of the bucket so that the air could escape as we were filling it up. We know the rollover valve on this seems to be functioning, so now we need to check everything involved with this vent. This vent goes into what's called the evaporative emission system. If there are any clogs or obstructions in that part of the system, you won't be able to fill the tank. Remember, that hole needs to be open in order for the gas to go in. Remember, this is the hole in our bucket. So I wanna make sure that air can flow through it, but also keep in mind that this, like the filler neck, has rollover protection in it. So you may not get the air out of it of what you're putting into it, but at least to verify that there is air coming out, I'm hoping that that uh, piece of tape moves when I add compressed air to this side of the fuel tank. Looks like we're good there. Now, when I remove the fuel tank from this Jeep, I also remove the filler neck. This is another possible problem area, particularly in areas where it can be rusty. And that rust can get inside of this tube and clog it up and make it so the fuel won't flow into it properly. Additionally, because this is a new filler neck, you wanna make sure that somebody didn't accidentally kink it or something like that, because that can also prevent the fuel from going down in here. Lastly, this is also a vent tube. So if this tube is rusty and doesn't allow any air or anything to pass through it, that can also cause an issue. So to make sure there's no restrictions in here, no kinks, no rust, everything flows through it nicely. Now this is part of the evaporative emission system on this Jeep and it lives up behind this rear bumper above the fuel tank. And these connections connect to the top of the fuel tank and this one here connects up to the, the filler neck that I showed you earlier. And some of these have a check valve in them so that fuel or air can only travel in one direction. So be aware of that. But I'm gonna go through this and just blow compressed air through a lot of these things and make sure that there's no obstructions in any of this because if there is, that could be the cause of the problem. Now as predicted, this is a check valve. It won't allow air to go through this way. But let's follow this guy all the way down over to here to this tube, which looks like a lot goes through this guy. So with this, let's just see. Yes, I can feel a little bit of air coming out of here, but this goes through a valve that goes to multiple locations. So I'm not concerned about a ton of air coming out of there, just some movement of air. 
That one's clear. That one's clear. There's air coming out of there. Now during this testing, I'm using compressed air and I'm blowing through all these hoses and things like that. But here's something super important. Make sure whenever you're working around a fuel tank or the fuel system like this, you work in a well ventilated area. Also know where your fire extinguisher is just in case because well, the stuff is flammable. So be careful. Before we get too far into this, I want to briefly explain what an evaporative emission system does. Now this cup is filled with dirty water, but picture this as gasoline. If I left this on this table, eventually what would happen is all the liquid inside here would evaporate and turn to vapor and go away. What the evaporative emission system is designed to do is it's designed to seal off the system and keep all those vapors inside your fuel system. This is the charcoal canister system for this Jeep and every vehicle with an evaporative emission system has something like this. This over here is the charcoal canister. You can kind of think of this like that glass that I put my hand over earlier and you can see that there's vents and tubes going in and out of it. What I want to make sure of is that there's no restrictions inside the canister itself and no restrictions in any of this piping. Now there will also be valves that are likely electronically activated in this system. These allow air to go in and out of this canister. So sometimes when you're trying to do your testing, you may find that you need to activate one of these valves in order to get air to pass through it. For now, let's just start with the charcoal canister and see if we can get some air to flow through it. Put a little piece of tape so we can see the air moving through it. Here we go. Now there is air coming out, granted, but it doesn't seem like the air that I'm putting in. But I'm gonna check the other direction also. Again, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of air going through it, but there is air moving through it. Now, as we saw, air does move through the canister, but another check, if you can get the canister off, is shake it. Sometimes it'll sound like a bean bag on the inside of it. If it does, that's a good indication that it could be bad. But this one doesn't really seem bad and there does seem to be airflow going through it. So I'm reluctant to condemn this or call this the source of the problem. Here's an important note about these charcoal canisters. On some vehicles, if you overfill your fuel tank, if you keep trying to put fuel in, that will send fuel into this charcoal canister, fill it up and destroy it. So I highly recommend against overfilling your fuel tank to help prevent an issue like this from ever happening in the first place. Based on what I'm seeing here and after going over the whole system, I suspect that that rollover valve inside the inlet of the tank was sticking and that was the source of the problem of not being able to fill it up. But I hope this gives you the basics of what to look for if you're dealing with a situation where you're trying to fill up your tank and you just can't. You need the hole in the top of your bucket. If it's not there or clogged, you're not gonna be able to fill it with fuel. Now that we've done all that work, let's see if we fixed it by putting some fuel in. Going in just fine. I'm Eric the Car Guy here with TRQ, where you can view before you do. Additional information down in the description, so don't forget to check there. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.